I suppose I've been living under a rock because the last year a new JavaScript animation library was released called Motion One. It's by the guy who made Framer Motion and it's really lightweight compared to alternatives like AnimeJS and Greensock and it's based on the Web Animations API. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with a really simple scroll-based animation. So let's get going. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Alrighty, so to get started, as you can see, I just have two pictures here in an empty folder otherwise. Uh, so we have no code. We're gonna start this thing from scratch. So uh, the first thing I'll do is start in index.html. We'll hit exclamation point enter here in Visual Studio Code for some boilerplate. We'll have link CSS main.sass. Yes, this time we're gonna specify a SAS file because we're gonna use a, a bundler um, parcel. All right, and parcel can accept SAS here in the index.html. Um, let's create those uh, files real quick. So a CSS folder and then the main.sass file. All right, and then finally, we're going to also go to view, terminal. All right, we're gonna type npm init hyphen y, which will just answer yes to all the default options. So that creates a package.json, which will now allow us to actually install motion one. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead over here to the docs and let's click on quick start and npm install motion. Very, very freaking simple. So let's install that. Alrighty, awesome, so we're ready to rock in that regard. Let's create an app.js file. Alrighty, and then let's also reference it, script and source equals app.js. Let's make sure to put a console log here, hi. And then finally, a parcel.index.html. Now you will have to use uh, npm to install parcel if you haven't yet on your machine. So make sure you do that. And right here is the URL. Now I'm just waiting for this to load. We'll hit F12 and we'll see right up there, hi. So now our project is ready to rock within the context of parcel. Okay, so what we wanna do now is define some HTML. And the HTML for this is gonna be super simple. Um, we're just gonna have a section that repeats three times did I put sections? No, section, there we go. And we're gonna have an inner element. So the reason I'm doing this, a, a div nested in this div is because this div section will be a display grid place content center. Um, that will center everything up. And then th inside of our inner element, we're gonna have a class of left because we're gonna have two columns. And of course stuff will be in there. And then also a class of right, very simple. And then this is kind of be like kind of like a card thing where you have an image at the top, a paragraph or a title, and then a paragraph. So uh, for that, we're just going to do image source is going to be pick one dot jpg. Um, I think it's some type of abstract picture. We're also going to have our um, an h3 element for the title, which will be solar eclipse, and then finally uh, the dreaded lorem twenty. There we go. <laughs> just some tw twenty words or so of crap that we don't want to read. Okay, so now what I'll do is just honestly, I'll just take the whole div class left and we will paste that right there. This will be pick two. Um, I, I'll i just type in, uh, let me see, asteroid belt. <laughs> That's the first thing that literally came to word to my mind. And that is it, that's it. So we'll take this section and for now we're just gonna leave it there. Um, and if we look at it, we can see it looks like crap. So let's real quickly switch focus to the SAS or the CSS. And I'll paste some rule sets in here to make this go quicker. We're gonna have a height of 100 viewport height on the body. We have a font family of enter, sans serif, and a margin of zero. Um, we also have our section here. So our section, like I said, height, 100 view per height, display, grid, place, content center, margin, bottom, 3M. I did that to affect the timing of the animation. It seemed like sometimes the uh, the scroll activated animations, which are gonna be applied to all three sections, the bottom section was firing too quick, uh, even though I wasn't scrolled into it. So the, a quick fix is just to add some margin. You know, it, maybe even like 0.1M would work as well. 
Um, there probably is a better fix for that. I'm just not sure what that is in the context of this library that I'm very new to. So uh, we're gonna have inner as well. And this is gonna be simple. It's just uh, display flex because remember there's two columns, left and right. And then we're going to justify the content space between. We are also gonna justify self center, which will get it in the vertical center. Let's save this so far just to see where we're at. All right, almost getting there. And then we'll do a width of 60% and also a gap of 4M between those two columns. All right, so we're not quite there yet. It's still not ideal. Uh, we're also going to take our images. Uh, let's see here. And we're gonna say height is 200 pixels, a width 100%, and then object fit cover will fix the fact that we're screwing around with the aspect ratio and changing that to cover will work much better. So now this is looking a lot, lot better. One final rule set for the paragraph. I'd like to have a little bit more line height than that. So we're just gonna take the line height to 1.4 rem. And there we go. That's our very simple two column little two card layout. So before we duplicate this and we have three sections, I wanted to show you just how to do simple animations that aren't necessarily tied to a scroll position or something like that. So in our app JS, let's remove the console. And the first thing we need to do is just to import animate. So import animate from, and this is gonna be motion. All right, so now we're ready to rock. All right, so the way we can call this in the most simple format is we just call animate. We'll open this up and we first have to specify selector much in the same way in GreenSock animation platform, we select a selector as a part of the first parameter of the function, like to, from, or from to. We're not, we're not doing GSAP though. I, you can see the similarities though. Um, and what we'll do for I, this first one, I guess, I will just animate I, the images, all right? And then in the next portion, what we do, if we refer back to the, um, let's see here, yeah, right here, the documentation for this, I, very, very simple. So we just take uh, the selector, we open it up in options, I, or an object rather right here, and we can then specify options in the third. It's very similar to GSAP tweens and such. So let's say for instance, we wanted to move the images, um, let's say Y, um, we'll just do 100 pixels, just like that. Oops, I forgot the object, there we go. All right, so let's just save this. I don't even know if this is gonna work properly. Oh yeah, I kind of screwed up over here. We wanna make sure we specify this is a module and then that should fix that error. All right, so if I refresh, there we go. <laughs> super stupid and super simple. We're just moving them down. And what's cool is it it, it knows automatically, even though we have uh, multiple images, it will it will still work. And you can also stagger between them. So if we click over here on the stagger portion, uh, it'll show you exactly how to use that. We have to import stagger though, in order for that to work. So if we go over to our app and we go over here, put a comma, import stagger, you'll see based on the documentation, we in the options section, we can simply specify a delay of a stagger and that's where it gets called. So um, right here, delay stagger 0.1, let's try to make it more obvious by like 0.4. And now you should see them both kind of come in not sequentially, just like that. Now what's also really cool is that you can specify um, multiple values here in this section. So let's get this a little bit tidied up so it's easier to read. Um, let's push this here. Let's get this right there. Actually, I'm being simple, leave that there. I'm gonna take everything and just kinda, there we go. And then finally, um, these are our options, that's fine. Okay, so what we'll do is right here, we can specify an actual uh, array of values. So if I put this in an array, uh, we can go from let's say zero 
and then actually let's make it go from like negative 50 pixels to zero. Alrighty, so let's save it, refresh, and there we go. Now, of course, you could apply and affect multiple values here. So uh, maybe we'll do height and we'll go from zero to uh, 200 pixels. Let's save it, refresh, there we go. So you can affect multiple properties, very, very simple. Now let's say for instance, we wanted to have uh, based on, you know, uh, maybe there's two cards that you have multiple sections on a website where you're scrolling down and you want those to, to, to come in based on uh, that portion or that, that section being in the viewport. So we have to import another element up here and uh, that's going to be in view. All right, so they call it in view for basically handling your scroll based animation. So we kind of have to refactor this code right here, which honestly I had that looking pretty ugly. Uh, <laughs> here's how we do this for this I in view. So we call in view and then we have to specify the selector uh, that this will work off of. Um, and it can be elements that show up multiple times. So if you have multiple sections, you could still specify that without having to do query selector all, for instance, and iterating through them. So I, for me, I'm just gonna say section. And before we continue, let's just take this entire section and let's copy and paste it. I'm not gonna bother making everything unique right now, but you can see right here. Now it'd be cool uh, to make these each one of these sections animate in, like each card or in title and paragraph in some unique way. So let's go ahead and focus on that. Let's go over here. So we open this up and then in the second parameter, we're going to put in target, oopsie, target. And then we're also going to open this up. That was not supposed to happen. There we go. Now in here, what we wanna do is we could now specify individual animations through the animate function just like we did, but it's gonna be tied to this, uh, this scrollable error area. So these, these animate calls aren't going to fire until the section is in view essentially. All right, so what we'll do is we specify um, animate and then we use the target that this is passed into, all right? So now we have access to that DOM element based on that target. Now what's really cool is we can take that target, let's do this, and we can put query selector all image, all right? And then we could open up the animation options for that. So we can say height, uh, we'll go from zero on the images, to 200 pixels, just like we did before. And then we'll also put transform none right here. And then, and you'll see, I'll add and remove that to show you what happens um, when you don't have that. Uh, and then we're gonna put in the options, a delay, a stagger, because we want to, I'm gonna, I want each one of those images in the left and right column to not fall in at the same time or have their height adjust at the same time. So we're going to stagger those. So 0 0.3, um, a duration, um, we're just gonna leave it by default for now. And then uh, easing, which is really cool. You can have uh, multiple easings. The way this works is through an array. So I, I, I grabbed this from the documentation, 0 0.55, this will just, affect it, uh, the animation in a unique way uh, in terms of how this is working. So if I come over here and I refresh, oh, we have an error, of course. Ah, uh, yes, that's because this target here needs to be like this. We need to specify and wrap that in uh, the squiggly object brackets. All right, so now if we save this, there we go. And there we go. So they fall in, and we can add a delay to those so that they don't start instantly uh, for those subsequent animations there. So now what we can do is we can take a target here, 
or animate rather, and we can add and chain these together. So for instance, if we wanted to also take the H3, maybe we'll change the opacity from zero to one. And again, you can chain more than just uh, two steps here. And then also we'll have Y for instance. Uh, so we'll put negative 20 pixels, so it'll come from the top to zero. Oh yeah, stupid me, this was, I had this at one instead of wrapping that. I'm, I'm coding too quickly. And you'll see that initially uh, it looks like it's hidden here. And again, we could put a uh, more of a delay uh, between these, but that's eh, fine for now. And then we can also do this with the paragraph as well. So we'll put in the P tag. And for this one, we're just gonna do eh, pretty much roughly the same thing, just for the fun of it. And there we go. So if I come down and I, I specify a longer duration, like 1.2, things will happen a little bit more smoothly. Let's see, let's save this. There we go, uh, we're at the top. Now as you see, I was at the very bottom rather, and now when I'm scrolling up, this is still working as well. So, refresh, there we go, and there we go. So today is literally the first day, this morning rather, that I learned about Motion One. I'm not sure how, it took a long time. I, I think that's enough for today. Um, before you know we ever get any you know, further. What do you think about this? Do you wanna see more tutorials? Let me know in the comments. And as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I will see you soon, goodbye.